first speaker will be Leon McKinney. And his speech is uh, about inspiration, and he's going to share a story with us, a vision, and lead us to action. Leon McKinney. What do you see here? What, 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 what? A glass of water. Vodka. Okay, one is more than half full. Um, very obvious. Uh, shows your brilliance. I made a mistake because I think maybe I have too much in it. So pretend that it's half full. So do you, you saw it as half full. How many of you see it as half empty? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> Logical, honest. See, some of you might have saw it as half empty, but you didn't want to admit it because you know that puts you on the pessimistic side, right? <laughs> on the containers, twice as big as the what? Actually, <laughs> it is half empty, it's half full, and an engineer would say it's underutilized. <laughs> and I, I see this all the time from the perspective of somebody who's lived his life amongst kids. And then amongst adults. And I wonder why they don't use their full potential. What holds them back? What holds you back? What holds me back? Many times it's the fact that we don't dream big enough. We don't believe big enough. And sometimes our greatest enemy is the fact not of our talent, but we're afraid of our talent and how much that we could accomplish if we really used it. I love this image of the butterfly. This comes from the book that I wrote. Susan Boltman drew this. What an amazing artist in our community. She's Dr. Roger Boltman's wife. What I like about this and the story I'm going to tell today is taking that lid off and let people soar. Let them become what they could be. And when I say people, I'm referring to students and young people in our society. Now, they are limited. And why are they limited? Well, the re reasons are probably too numerous to talk about. We could put blame on what? We could put blame on parents, if they have any. I can remember being shocked when my son, in the third grade, I showed up at a parent-teacher conference, and the teacher indicated that out of the students in that class, only about three out of 30 still had their original parents. That's the way of our society 20 years ago when my son was in school. I don't think that's changed a whole lot. So. What is the story I want to tell you that can be inspirational in the middle of all of this? 30% of our students in Wenatchee High School, Eastmont High School, aren't even graduating. So the problem seems awful mountainous, doesn't it? And yet I'm inspired by a phrase that said this, every time a new baby is born, God says yes once more with a cosmic roar of affirmation. And then he says to those of us who are listening, what can you do to make a difference? So now I'm going to take a chance on technology. Now there's a reason God doesn't use technology. <laughs> he can't stand the frustration. <laughs> I'm going to make the attempt tonight because I want you to see, in person, a young lady who really inspires me. Her name is Cynthia Matlock. And let's see if I can have Cynthia share. Now, I know her voice is going to be awfully soft because coming out of that computer, it's not very loud. I hope that you can hear it. If you can't, you'll get a sense of Cynthia, and then I'll share some of the verbal stuff if it's too soft for you to hear, okay? 
大変な質問Pretty hard for you to hear, so I'm going to cover that for a little bit. What she said was that this scholarship gave her hope. I don't know if you picked up on that. Cynthia was homeless her senior year at Wenatchee High School. Cynthia was a 3 8 student. And her first 11 years, she went to the Cascade Christian Academy and then at the end of that period, wanted to go to Wenatchee High School to apply for a full college. Her father was in prison because of being several DWIs and her mother was on drugs, so she simply removed herself from the home, bounced around, and finally found a place. So, I get goosebumps. I interviewed her in my office and I don't have time to tell you the rest of the story, except that she ended up with a, she got the Hope Scholarship and that just relaxed her. By the time we got to the end of the year, she ended up with a full ride at Walla Walla. And she came back and thanked me again last year. So, the vision. The vision is I simply have the idea that well, I can turn hope for kids and the frugal philanthropist program into something that started in Wenatchee that can reach kids all over America. We have asked people to donate 10 cents a day or one latte a month and raised a quarter of a million dollars in eight years. Tonight I'm going to ask you to consider to giving 10 cents a day and this is going to be the day I started this program. I wanted to start it in this room with you people because I have been sharpening my saw here for six months, as many of you know. I wanted to get better and better. I want to be able to stand any place in the country and present what we've done here in Wenatchee to the country in an inspirational fashion. So I thank you for helping me get better. And I have a couple of things real quick and I'm done. One is that if you're willing to become a frugal philanthropist, I will give you the sheet and you just talk to me later. And anybody, that's once a salesman, always a salesman. Anybody who makes a commitment tonight, no, you don't get the Ginsu knife, I said that last time, but you get a copy of a book that I wrote, a second copy of a book I consolidated on, and a free latte from Starbucks worth <laughs> five bucks. That's as good as I can do, and I hope you'll consider 10 cents a day for helping kids and kicking off becoming a frugal philanthropist. 100% of your money will go to help kids. There's no overhead. 98 goes to the scholarship or helping kids during school. The other 2% goes to the ESD for backpacks, pencils, and other aids for classrooms. Thank you very much.